The Battle of Lone Pine in the Gallipoli Campaign of 1915 was one of the savagest of the First World War and the largest Australian troops had engaged in up to that point. The battle, which raged for four days, was fought at close quarters in an intense struggle to capture a covered trench system in what participants described as a mine gone mad. The Gallipoli campaign of the First World War was designed by Britain's First Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, to capture the Dardanelles Strait. The strategy, however, to open a supply route through the Bosphorus to ally Russia's Black Sea ports had bogged down into a stalemate. Since the invasion of the peninsula in April 1915, German ally, Turkey, had resolutely defended their homeland from British and French forces for five months in a determined arm wrestle. A plan for a breakout of the bridgehead, known as the August Offensive, was devised by the British. It involved an opening of a new front with British troops at Suvla Bay to the north of the Anzac sector, with engagements by mainly Australian troops at the Lone Pine and Neck positions in support of a New Zealand attack on the summit of the strategic Chunuk Bear. The Lone Pine position on the right of the Anzac sector was a 200 metre long plateau which narrowed at the centre. Named after the resilient lonesome pine, a Pinus brucia tree which stood resolutely as the warring Australians and Ottoman Turks faced off either side of the flat stretch of ground. Known as Canley Sirt by the Turks, they had dominated the Lone Pine position since the early days of the campaign, while the Australians occupied the western edge of the plateau on a post called the Pimple. Slated for the afternoon of the 6th of August, 1915, the seasoned Australian 1st Infantry Brigade was tasked to capture the Pine. As the 2nd, 3rd and 4th Battalions filed into the trenches on the Pimple with the 1st in reserve, tunnellers had previously laid mines in no man's land and had blown them to leave craters for attacking troops to take cover in while crossing the flat plain. While some troops had to cover the 100 metre distance to the Turkish trenches from the front lines, others were to spring forth from an extensive underground tunnel system under no man's land, an effort to reduce the distance to cover and to surprise the enemy. At 5pm on the 6th of August 1915, the preparatory barrage lifted and the troops of the 1st Australian Infantry Brigade launched themselves from the fire trenches and tunnels. Observers noticed something strange. When the Australians had reached the Turkish line, they halted. The Turkish front line had been roofed extensively in heavy pine logs to provide cover from previous artillery barrages, creating an obstacle to accessing the Turkish position. Surprised by the arrival of the Australians so soon after the barrage lifted, Turks emerged from tunnels where they'd been taking safety and started firing through the gaps in the log covering, hitting many Australians. Some attackers returned fire blindly into the trench while others dragged the logs away in an effort to gain access. As the Australians started pouring into the position, the cramped conditions rendered rifles virtually useless as combatants threw bombs at close range and used bayonets and trenching tools, tooth and nail in savage hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The close quarters combat at Lone Pine started resulting in heavy casualties on both sides as the bodies of dead Turks and Australians were five deep in some places. In some cases, bodies were piled up as barricades in hotly contested trenches. 
Within half an hour of going over the top, the Australians had taken the Turkish front line at Lone Pine and had started gouging their way through the maze of communications trenches, capturing a significant portion of the position. Reaching in area in the rear of the position called the Cup, Australians dug in for a ferocious counter-attack by the Turks the following day. The battle would rage on for four more days until hostilities ended on the 10th of August. As a result of the fighting, seven Victoria Cross medals, the nation's highest military honour, were awarded to Lone Pine veterans, the most of any other engagement by Australians during the Gallipoli campaign. Hero of the Anzac landing in April, Captain Alfred Shout distinguished himself leading the attacks at Lone Pine. He was mortally wounded when a bomb exploded in his hand. Victoria Cross recipients, Lieutenant Frederick Tubb and Corporals Alexander Burton and William Dunstan fought shoulder to shoulder. Tubb was wounded, Burton was killed. Also awarded the Victoria Cross was Lance Corporal Leonard Kaiser, Lieutenant William Simons and 19-year-old Private John Hamilton. And for the multitude of dead, due to the exposed position and the threat of snipers, they lay unburied in no man's land, unlining the parapets in the places where they fell. While the Australians captured and held the Lone Pine Plateau, they would advance no further. The New Zealanders took Chunuk Bear in ferocious fighting, but after being reinforced by the British, the Turks regained the summit. The British landed at Suvla Bay, but made little progress. The Australian light horse were massacred at the tragedy at the neck. The August offensive was a costly failure. Allied forces would evacuate from the Gallipoli Peninsula in December 1915.